And thank you, Matt. And thank you also for establishing swearing is all right up here. Just a note to those of you who are speaking. There we go. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll uh, be delivering our first uh, Pikachu. <laughs> Before I joined the staff of the DGCBC, I was a location manager for 30 years. And I worked on some of the iconic BC shows in the early days, like Danger Bay. <laughs> Woo, shout out for Danger Bay. <laughs> right? 21 Jump Street. He looks a little different now, huh? Yeah. Wise guy. Yeah, some, and of course MacGyver. Oh, oh, no, 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 that's my boy. There we go. I actually tried to find some photos of myself working as a location manager and, um, well, what I really realized is I just have a long history of sort of photos with moderately famous people. So I moved on from that quite quickly, although there was one photo I was really disappointed that I couldn't find, and it was a photo of me with Roger Moore. It's a proud moment. Um, it's, uh, it's at the last, last lunch uh, of the last day of our shoot. We were in Victoria, actually, and uh, we were shooting at Craig Dara Castle, and it's a photo of me in the, at the lunch table, and I'm shoveling food into my mouth while Roger Moore stands next to me pouring me a plastic glass of champagne. It's just, it's a, it's a teary moment, really. Yeah. Okay, let's get this party started. For me, location, manager, location management breaks down into really three distinct elements. It's bold, creative, collaborative storytelling. This photo is of Yellowknife, and the story here is that mosquitoes, much like rain, don't really show up on camera. Locations is also a fluid dance of logistical, logistical wizardry. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I love this juggling chainsaw graphic for this because it's so much like what location managers do. Of course, they're juggling the chainsaws on a unicycle and the unicycle's on fire and the chainsaws are on fire and you're all on fire. You get the picture. You know what I'm talking about. You've all been there. Location management is also an opportunity for spectacular leadership. Hmm, interesting. Talent, energy, heart. Today I'm going to go with what's behind door number three. Uh, this is me in the early 80s. Oh good, we're not good with math, that's awesome. <laughs> I know that these photos seem to indicate that I was raised by ranchers in the Chilcotin, but actually, I am from a film family. This is the Cutler clan on the set of the Canadian film Kingsgate. Uh, my mom was a publicist, my dad was a writer, producer, director, and that slightly deranged looking dude on the left is my brother. <laughs> he blows shit up. That's a totally different speech. For the purposes of this chat today, though, I want to talk about myself and my father. Wait a sec, he's still looking at my brother, isn't he? <laughs> White guys love each other, huh? Anyway. All of my beliefs about leadership, I learned from my father. He is one of those people who just implicitly and naturally understood that human resources are human first, and resources only if and when they want to be. Um, he was one of the founding members of the Directors Guild of Canada here in BC. And many years later, oh, this happened. So yes, you guessed it. I am now the executive director of the organization my father helped to build 40 plus years ago. No pressure. No pressure whatsoever. He reads every single thing the Guild sends him, and on Sundays we go down there to visit, and he wants to talk about it. All of it. And he's like, well, you sent me this great stuff. I'm like, Dad, there's a lot of people working there now. I don't read everything you get. Anyway, it's very good. My leadership journey 
I think much like many people's leadership journey in the film industry was, mm, I'll call it unplanned and haphazard. Thing is, that I now know that leadership is best developed with intention and foresight, consideration, design. My journey was a little bit more of a random approach with admittedly less than awesome results. Like many of us in the industry, early on I worked for, I'm just going to call them some questionable leaders. You, you know who I mean. I remember going home to my parents' house, and when I started, I was 19 years old, and I would say to my parents, I will never, ever, ever treat people the way I'm being treated. That will never happen. I was going to be a better, gentler, kinder, more respectful leader. The sort of leader that lifts people up instead of tearing or pushing them down. Even when I was stressed, I was going to never yell, shame, guilt, blame, throw people under the bus, or make them feel small. That was my plan. And just a few short years into my career, a couple of people on my team, bravely, courageously, informed me that I was all that and a bag of chips. Yeah, I had managed to become the very thing that I had hoped to avoid because learned behavior is a true kick in the ass. Moving on from the chips. See, the thing is, nobody had told me that aside from all of the many, many doing things that location managers have on their plate that we all know about, there's also a heap ton crazy long list of being things that you have to do. And those are things like being a good listener, being empathetic, being something other than a cow when you feel like you're so stressed your head is going to pop right off your body, right? Because the simple truth is that you're modeling leadership, and you're doing that when you mean to, and you're doing it when you don't mean to. So it's really important for us to consider what people are learning when they watch us. Okay, okay, also there was the issue of being a girl, because I am a girl, uh, which we're going to discuss in more depth this afternoon. But in, in truth, my bigger issue when I started was not being a female. It was that I was so young that most producers couldn't imagine giving me control of their lunch money, never mind their locations budget for how many hundreds of thousands. It wasn't really millions of dollars then. But it was hundreds of thousands of dollars, and most of them were like, we're going to what? No, does she own a car? OK, I was a little older than this, to be fair. Um, and I also, I'd moved on from that awkward cowgirl phase. This just wasn't working for anyone. But you know, still, this cotton ginny motif, that's not exactly inspiring, you know, mature, trustworthy professional, right? I mean, I was 19 when I started in film. It was, a, it was a difficult sell. But mostly what I remember about being female at this point in my career was that often I was invisible. So it was true that I had um, I hadn't made a plan for the type of leader that I wanted to be. I hadn't gone out and created a map. I hadn't a compass in my pocket. I didn't even really at some level get that I was supposed to be a leader. I did work on some cool shows. Oh, not that one. <laughs> Dear Lord. No, not now. Oh, oh better. Phew. Oh. Yeah, I worked on some quality programming, but just not little man. And I did, a few, I did learn a few important things through the course of my uh, career. I learned, for example, how to fix things in the dead of night. That was driven into by a teamster, I'm just saying. And it was three in the morning when this photo was taken. I learned to be in the right place at the right time. There's a couple of people in the room who might have been standing next to me when this was shot. And I learned how to deal with the mosquitoes. That is actually me. Uh, but I certainly hadn't learned to be this guy. 
So I often like to express publicly my thanks and gratitude to these two individuals who specifically found their voices and with kindness and with respect told me exactly how it felt to be led by me. And that was a powerful message. I mean, who tells an asshole that they're an asshole? It probably seemed crazy at the time, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have that conversation, so thank you. I wish Peter was here too. I'll call him and give him shit later. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> That'd be everything I'm, yeah, right, okay, still learning. So that was when this happened, and then that's where all of these things happened, which eventually led to this happening. And from all of this, I do have a few leadership nuggets that I want to share just to launch our day. A little bit of advice. First one is communication, job one. Keep it clear, direct, transparent. Second one, feedback. People want to get better, but they don't read minds. Don't be afraid to apologize when you do something wrong. And make no mistake, you will do something wrong. You will yell at someone. You will shit on someone. You will throw someone under the bus, even if you do it accidentally. When that happens, just go and tell them you're sorry. It, it is such a powerful statement. And respect and empathy are like good dynamite for your relationships. And as you guys all know in this room, you're going to need those relationships in the worst possible way. So this is my invitation to all of you to gift those that you lead with a fully functional compass. Good leadership cannot be learned in a vacuum. Read a book. Take a course, work with a coach, find a mentor. Whatever it takes to get there, get yourself there. It is the best investment you will ever make in yourself. There are two signs in my office. The first one says, life is short, eat the bacon, and that's just really good advice. Let's just face it. I mean, it's like, is that a trick question? The other one says, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. So let's start there. Thank you 